everyone, and welcome to this ActMotif webinar presented by Dr. Michael Garbati. In this presentation entitled Improve Chromatin Analysis with Cut and Tag Assays, we'll be discussing the evolution of chromatin analysis techniques and how recent developments have made newer assays both more powerful and easier to perform. So please enjoy Dr. Garbati's talk. Thank you for the introduction. Today, we're going to start off by looking at the history of chromatin mapping techniques. Um, then we're going to talk about comparing chip to the, the new in situ techniques, cut and run and cut and tag. Uh, next, we'll introduce a seminal paper that introduced cut and tag. Uh, we'll go through the workflow of the technique, look at some data examples and some head to head data, uh, and then we'll wrap it up with some conclusions. So first, I'm going to look at we're going to look at the history of chromatin mapping techniques, starting with chip. So chromatin immunoprecipitation, or CHIP, um, was developed back in the 1980s. Um, histone marks and transcription factors uh, binding has traditionally been measured using chromatin IP. Uh, CHIP uses formaldehyde crosslinking and fragmentation of chromatin by sonication. Um, in 2011, Active Motif introduced a transposase of assisted chip that we called TAM chip. This method used a TN5 transposase conjugated to a secondary antibody to attach adapters to chromatin fragments. And this method had a slightly increased resolution, but also had a complicated workflow. Um, recently, improvements to chromatin analysis have been made by Stephen Hanikoff's group at Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center. And uh, these Hennikoff techniques are the in situ chromatin analysis methods. Um, in 2016, cut and run was introduced. Um, and 2019, cut and tag was introduced. Now, these methods use intact permeabilized cells rather than sonicated chromatin. Um, primary antibodies bind to the native target in situ. In cut and run, a protein A conjugated microcockal endonuclease is used to cut chromatin where the antibody is bound. Library prep is then performed on those cut fragments. Cut and tag, however, represents an improvement on cut and run because instead of MNase, an adapter loaded TN5 transposase fused to protein A is directed to the antibody complex. And this enzyme cut and as adapters to the fragments, thereby building a library in situ. And this saves some time by cutting out a step of library prep. So the, now let's compare the pros and cons to using each of these methods. First, CHIP is the established technique for mapping histone marks and transcription factors. Because it's an immunoprecipitation, it requires millions of cells per reaction. It also requires fixation and sonication, the latter of which limits the resolution to the size of the fragments. Cut and run improves upon chip because it provides better resolution with less sequencing depth required. It's also a native in situ assay. However, with cut and run, you still need to perform a library prep on the MNase fragments. It can work with DNA binding proteins, but not as reliably as CHIP. Cut and tag, however, has all the advantages of cut and run with a faster workflow due to the TN5 enzyme building the library for you in situ. It has a better resolution than CHIP and even slightly better re resolution than cut and run. And because it's a TN5 based library prep, it may, in future development, be adapted to single cell assays. One drawback to cut and tag is that it, in its current form, it doesn't work well with transcription factors. We're currently optimizing this. So next, we're gonna dive into that seminal publication that introduced cut, cut and tag to the world. The Hennikoff Lab first introduced cut and tag in 2019 with this publication in Nature Communications. Now, the key takeaways from this paper are that cut and tag, unlike chip, 
does not require cross-linking or sonication. It has a higher resolution than chip and cut and run. And it provides this data at a lower cost with less starting material than chip. So now let's take a look at this cut and tag workflow. So firstly, intact cells are immobilized on concannabulin A beads. They're then permeabilized and incubated with a primary antibody that finds its target in situ. The, then a secondary antibody binds to the primary antibody and next a protein A conjugated adapter loaded TN5 transposase binds to this antibody chromatin complex. TN5 transposase cuts and tags the DNA bound by the primary antibody. Next, barcoded fragments are amplified and sequenced. So now let's take a look at some of the data. So here are Hennikoff's results comparing cut and tag to chip and cut and run. The red sequencing tracks at the top are H3K27 trimethyl peaks. At the very top, we have the positive control, which is ChIP-seq, and they use the read depth of 50 million. For the next three tracks, the authors changed the read depth to 8 million reads and compared the performance of ChIP-seq, cut and run, and cut and tag directly. They also use cut and tag to measure H3K4 monomethyl, K4 dimethyl, as well as RNA Pol2. And at the very bottom, the pink track is attack seek, and this is a negative control. Now, this is important because the TN5 transposase is the same enzyme that's used in attack seek. The authors show here that the TN5 enzyme is properly directed to the antibodies and that it doesn't simply create an open chromatin profile like it would in attack seek. So now let's focus on this data that is a head-to-head -head comparison between these three methods. So firstly, these in situ techniques, cut and run and cut and tag, report the same peaks as chip seek, showing that there are valid chromatin mapping methods. Now looking at the cut and tag track at the bottom, we see that there's less background here than in the 50 million read depth of the chip seek reaction, and even a slightly better resolution than the cut and run reaction. So for these reasons, cut and tag represents an improvement on the previously existing chromatin analysis methods. So now when do we choose cut and tag over chip seek? Uh, cut and tag requires only 100,000 cells per reaction. This is 10 or more times less than what's required for CHIP. So in this example, the same sample can be used to measure three different histone marks, RNA Pol2 and ataxic, all using less than 1 million cells. So this makes multiomic studies with limited primary cells more feasible. Next, we'll look at the cell and workflow requirements for cut and tag versus cut and run and chip. So cut and tag represents an improvement upon previous methods for histone marks. It uses native conditions, an enzyme that not only cuts at the antibody complex, but also creates the library. While on average cut and tag experiments start with 100,000 cells, which is a much smaller input than required for chip seek and smaller than required for cut and run, our kit can work with as few as 5,000 cells. And the workflow for cut and tag is shorter and simpler than for chip and for cut and run due to the library being created by the TN5 enzyme. Now we'll look at the pros and cons to cut and tag. Firstly, it's more sensitive, cheaper, faster, and better than the chromatin analysis techniques that we've looked at previously. And we also now have a growing list of cut and tag validated antibodies. 
However, there are some cons to cut and tag. The drawbacks are that firstly, it's a new technique with few publications and that it currently doesn't work well with transcription factors. The TN5 antibody complex is bulkier than microcalcal endonuclease and perhaps this causes some steric hindrance. Also the high salt washes that are required for cut and tag to prevent it from giving a, an ataxic profile can disrupt transcription factor interactions. However, Active Motif is currently optimizing this technique. In conclusion, cut and tag is the superior method for mapping histone marks. However, ChIP-seq remains the gold standard for the gold standard method for mapping transcription factors. In conclusion, cut and tag is the superior method for mapping histone marks. However, ChIP-seq remains the gold standard method for mapping transcription factors. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, please contact me at mgarbati at activemotif.com. And for additional information, visit our website, activemotif.com. Thank you.